in the order. Six oh three. Six oh wow. We're, two, we're, three. we're two or three minutes late. I'll, I'll go with a quiet <laughs> issue. So. Okay. All right. So first on our agenda is uh, approval of the minutes from last month. Last month. Fine. I approve. <laughs> I, I hear a motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Ah, that was easy. Moving along. <laughs> Are you in favor? Are you in favor of that one? Give a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and one opposed. Well, happens. Um, Ken, I would actually um, suggest that maybe we do the um, feedback, the survey first before we get into the the form? Yeah. Okay, form. sure. So let's go with um, feedback on the survey for the TIF fund expenditures. And Reagan, tell us what we're looking at here. All right. So uh, just to, to remind people, uh, last month we approved uh, a, and I actually, I have all the survey results if people are interested in, in okay. browsing through them. These are the paper survey results. This group approved this survey format uh, to get some feedback on what people in the community think uh, our priorities in terms of uh, allowable TIF expenditures. And as we all recall, um, you know, the, the, the benefit of, of TIF funds are, or having a TIF is that um, the town is able to shield the value of the TIF, the, the increased value in the district from the state, uh, which helps us with county taxes and aid to education and revenue sharing. But in exchange for that kind of, um, the taxes from the new revenue can be used on only certain types of projects as, as um, outlined in statute. So that's something that kind of people don't always get. So I like to, to, remember, to remind people of that. So we uh, just made a general list of some items that um, TIF funds can be spent on. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that our TIF district has all of these expenditures in it, but just is within the universe of what you can spend TIF revenues on. So we gave kind of 11 very general options for, uh, we targeted the um, voters. And uh, I think I counted 68 responses um, on election day. And then um, we had an additional 48 online or something. It, it was it was over a little over 100 responses to this, which I thought was pretty decent for, for a survey. Well, and if you think about the number of people who voted that day, how many was that? That was like three or 400 maybe. Oh, was it that many? Yeah. 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 Well, but it's a decent, I mean, anytime you talk about statistical significance. Right. Right. Anything more than 30 or 40 responses starts to generate something that's reasonable. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so I was able to take the online responses and input the paper responses online so that it all came out into the same um, analysis. And that's what we see here that's in the, in the right beautiful there. colored yes. form. Yes, yeah, so that's what you have right Easy there. Easy to read. Okay. So, um, so the first page is the, is the bar chart. I'll just tell you quickly. The second page, if you wanted to see kind of the weighted breakdown of responses um, one through 11, uh, we, we asked people to give their top three choices. And most people were able to follow those directions and did very well. The vast majority, I was surprised. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying. And then the third page is uh, there was the option to additional comments. And so you guys can see what the additional comments were. Um, um, there weren't a ton, there okay. were about 20, 18. Um, so you can look over those uh, as you're at your leisure. But um, 
And then the last few pages are just what the town of Monmouth currently allows for TIF expenditures. And when I say that, I mean, again, um, our TIF document basically asks the state or lets the state know what we're planning to spend our tax revenues on. And that needs to be approved by the state. They look at what we're saying and they say, okay, yes, that's in line with statute. That's fine. You can do that. Um, with an amendment, we are able to change those um, categories or add to them or take away from them if we'd like to. Um, but for right now, this is what we have available. And I think on the sheet, the reason I bring that up is because I tried to check the items that we listed on our survey that we don't currently have as expenses for our TIF right. district. So in other words, we can't spend our revenues on these certain items right now as our TIF has approved. Okay. Um, so. Which is which is why I mean I mean this kind of gets to the reason we're hearing on a regular basis that our TIF is outdated and our, our current TIF uh, program is outdated and not really addressing the issues that people think are important. Right. We we may not. It, it's worth considering that the the TIF expenditures may not be in line with what the community feels is right. most valuable right. for for TIF funds. So just something for this group to consider as we start looking at that. Um, but um, and so I know we all can kind of read, but just for the the viewing audience that might be out there, sure. um, the top um, the most popular response for what TIF revenues should be spent on were recreational trail creation and maintenance. And that, that I mean, does Monmouth have snowmobile trails, yes. hiking trails? So this no. would be- a, Well, yes. We have a couple, a few. Okay. So, um, you know, again, th that type of funding can be used to maintain existing trails, builds new trails and it's kind of municipality wide so it's not it's not relegated to just being in the tiff district for right. example it, it can be anywhere in the community basically. so the so this gets to the question that we were talking about a couple of meetings back where you mentioned that where the revenue comes from from the tiff is different than where the revenue is spent or where where the uh, the funds are then spent right in this case, we can spend them outside of the district anywhere right. we would want to. If if we, if recreational trails was something that the town wanted to pursue and kind of build out, I know there's been talk about potentially trails behind Cumston Hall and some other places. Yep. So just something to keep in mind um, as our comp plan, you know, yep. gets finalized and or redeveloped or wherever it is. So uh, there's also been, uh, yeah, I'd say the the trail behind Cumston Hall is probably uh, the closest to fruition in terms of seeing seeing it actually created. Um, there's also been some discussion of uh, connecting a trail. Uh, well. Some discussion of creating a tax incentive program for agricultural property owners to allow a permanent trail on their property, one that would be, you know, on the deed, so it can't be taken back. Um, and and there have been some large property owners who uh, have expressed some interest in in, in willingness to to do that and allow a very significant extension of the trail system that is uh, starts at the town line with Litchfield and the bird sanctuary down there and then crosses um, through South Monmouth for uh, 10, 10 miles. Yeah. And whether that could be a multi-use trail for both snowmobiles, ATVs and hikers, uh, open for discussion. I think the property owners would be willing to do that. I don't know. 
the bird sanctuary. Maybe not, but we really haven't talked to them about the multi-use part of it. Um, they currently allow hikers in there, obviously. So, uh, so there's some there's some opportunity there if um, TIF funds could be if if the TIF district could be changed so that TIF funds could be used to uh, to make that work, right? And also make you know the agricultural uh, uh, aspect of Monmouth easier to maintain. Great. Great. Is there, is there a, uh, a state or county entity that deals with kind of trails and development of trails or anything like that? No, the closest I would say would be like the, the, the Conservation uh, Commission. Our, our Municipal Conservation Commission does. Oh, the, yeah. okay. the, the town take care of the uh, Woodier Woods trails. And then there's also uh, the Kennebec Land Trust that is the nonprofit in the area that does conservation easements. And that's sort of, you know, they're, they're the holder of many, many conservation easements. Um, with, with hiking trails? With, with public, most of them with public access. And then you have the Conchnawaga Trailblazers, which is the local snowmobile club. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're funded several ways, part of which is through the town's uh, recreational vehicles. So they get a portion that's uh, allocated to the state. And they also, I mean, that and that, you know, it's a huge multiplier because they're mostly volunteer people maintaining these trails. And then, uh, and and it's not just snowmobiles; it's also there's a portion of it that's ATV trails as well. No, uh, zero. They, they would like it to be. Um, Is it zero? We, we we do not have a, an ATV trail designated ATV trail in the town of it yet. No. Oh. Yeah, we have an ATV club, so it's it's snowmobile slash ATV club. Right now, they're just doing excursions to other trail systems in the state. Huh. Um, Thank you for the, correcting me. Yeah, the goal would be to eventually, but I think there's too many property owners that don't. Trails, so you got to connect the dots in order to have the whole trail. Yeah. You know, so yeah. there could be a certain property owner that allows ATVs on their property. That's possible, but I, mean, I don't think there's any designated ATV trails currently. Gotcha. Does the state regulation only allows the money to be used for uh, snowmobile trails? Right? Maintain. You don't have any ATV trails, and you don't get any allocation. But um, but, but there is an allocation. I mean, there is a there is an arm of the Department of Conservation that right now the money state. is all for snowmobile. Right? No, no. Well, there yes in Monmouth. Yeah. Uh, but there would be if we had ATV trails, there would be a smaller allocation that would come from the state that would help maintain an ATV trails. There is an interest to make it a multi-use trail. You know, for instance, horses. You know, uh, but. Bridges and stuff can't accommodate the hooks, you know, and it would be dangerous for the horses, you know, certain bridges, you know, so the, there would be some monies that would need to be spent to reinforce bridges, make them animal proof, you know. Well, when they, you know why they raise the ATV rate so much? Because I just registered two of ours and it was, it got up to like $75. Pay for the trail systems. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Seriously. It, Pretty much. And a portion of the gas tax actually goes to ATVs and snowmobile trail maintenance. A small share. There's actually more state funding coming out through grants and stuff for ATVs because it, it's, it's actually becoming more popular than snowmobiles. Because snowmobiles you can only use three months out of the year. ATVs maybe you can use year round. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you get and, a good season. And ATVs also are you know, becoming more sort of appropriate for mobility impaired people who aren't necessarily super active, right. but still be want to get outside. Okay, so uh, so recreational trail creation is number one. Right. Yes, and so 
uh, that was number one, definitely something for this group to consider um, when when we are yep. when we're reviewing our tips. The yep. second one that came up was the certain environmental protection projects specific to lakes. Yep. Now we made this intentionally broad, and what my um, thought would be at this point would be to talk to the TIF attorney that the town has. Um, who does TIF districts all day long and interprets the law and, and figure out what she's seen in terms of um, uh, ways that, that TIF funds have been used to um, protect the integrity of lakes. Because obviously, I mean, it's, it, we're in Maine, um, the it, lakes are a huge economic driver right. in Maine. Um, and so, if she hasn't seen it, then I think it's time to um, test those waters, so to speak, um, because it just, it just, I think you can make a really strong case for um, remediation and development and even development. I, I know that there have been, um, you know, boat landings put in and, you know, public access options as well. So, um, right. Just, uh, but the environmental protection, I think, would go kind of hand in hand with that. So, um, something just to for me to explore with her and see what we might, what our options might be that are already on the books in other towns. Sure. So, I mean, kind of related to that, number six is uh, number six out of how many? One, two, eleven. Three, uh, number six out of eleven was. Um, uh, right. public access and economic development and public access to lakes. Right. And uh, yes. And so, I mean, that, that was number six. These, these weren't, you know, they, they weren't uh, that far, far spread out, but uh, yes, that would kind of probably go hand in hand with, yep. the, with the uh, protection. Yep. So uh, then the third was the business facade improvement in downtown areas, which I was, Happy to see, I guess, you know, the the, the other thing besides um, just getting input from the town was also to help kind of prime people to the idea that this is what the TIF does. And so when we see things happening, oh, that's because of the TIF. And this is something that they feel is important. They want, they want their business areas to be improved with tax revenues. So um, I was glad to see that since we do have a business facade program that we'll be right. going over today. Um, Sounds like that one is hitting the nail, at least one of them on the head. Right. So that's, so that's great. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, so then the fourth one was this idea of the public water extension to North Monmouth. Um, so that obviously was uh, a pretty popular idea for a lot of reasons. Uh, I think there's PFAS concerns. I think there's development concerns in terms of it's a whole lot easier to, um, um, build and, and develop property when you have public water on those properties. So, um, the, the tricky part with this, as we talked about, was the idea that this would need to be something unlike the trails that could be anywhere um, having um, public water being installed would have to um, line up within the TIF district or be right outside and directly related to the TIF district. So that would mean perhaps adding a piece of property in North Monmouth that we said you know, it was a business area that we wanted to bring water and sewer to. Right. Um, and, and because you have so much land in your TIF district right now, it's bumping up against the high threshold of allowable land. Right. We would probably need to swap out swap another out something. piece of land, which, you know, um, I, I don't, I think that would, you know, not, it would just take a little analysis, but it's definitely doable. So that was just something to, you know, kind of keep on our radar. So um, it is, and I, I, I note that it is number four on our list, um, not that far away from numbers, numbers two, three, and five. 
like those are all all of those are kind of bunched together the clear number one like the biggest difference is between one and two yeah right i mean that's that kind of says to me like that's the highest priority and then two three four and five and i would say arguably, i think it kind of drops after five so yeah after five maybe cliff. yeah so it's kind of a close tie for two three four and five in terms of the response rate and and the differences among them all seem to be sort of pretty close um uh, it is notable that the all of the warrant items that the select board um uh recommended to pass passed for next year's budget and part of that is the funding for Bill Tynan to do his analysis of the CMP substation. And for you guys, a little bit of background, the CMP substation was put in at the beginning of this TIP district in 2011, 2012, something like that. That was when it was constructed. That's when we formed this TIP district. Originally, they said it was going to be a $20 million project. When it actually came to what the assessment turned out to be. It turned into like a $13 million assessment. And then every year since then, there have been reductions in that, there have been requests for reductions in that assessment from CMP. Uh, and we really haven't had the, um, uh, and, uh, the, 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 analysis done by a qualified person to challenge any of those requests because they've been sort of nibbled requests right every year we get nibbled we get nickel and dot and so now we as part of this new budget have approved a five thousand dollar chunk of money to hire this consultant who is oh, the fine. who is the guy who knows industrial sites and has uh, evaluated a dozen different CMP sites around the state. All he's never cost the town a dime <laughs> because he knows his stuff, and he can he can go in and give a fair value um, assessment. So um, I would suggest, and maybe this is a to do for Reagan, is to we had this question about whether or not the 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 parcels underneath the power lines are necessary, a necessary part of the TIF. Like, does the town generate a whole lot of revenue from the parcels? The huge, they're very big. There are hundreds of acres of parcels uh, underneath that sit underneath the power lines. And my very vague recollection, and maybe the thing has changed since I had this conversation with Three town, the three, third former town manager ago, um, uh, was that they uh, they didn't generate anything. They they made no contribution to the tip. Uh, but okay. yes, Bill Tynan would know that. I think. Yes, I think he will. And did, did you say how much was allocated for him to do that? I think it was five thousand bucks. So that's not coming out of tip revenues. Um, I. I do not know. I, that's a question for the town should, manager. Because that is directly related to the TIF district. Uh, I think it went into the assessment, assessing line item in the budget, but also part of our um, process uh, warrant items is the ability to transfer to up to 10% of each line item somewhere else. Okay. So we can, uh, there, there may would, be a way to move it around. Yeah, I would, I would argue that that's, that's a, that's a TIF expense. Of course it is. So, so, so yeah. So maybe that's a question for Justin. Yeah. Okay. To happen behind the scenes. Good. Perfect. Um, great. So, um, yeah. I mean, we and and we can go through all of these, but I think I think Kent is right that you know there was kind of the clear um, message from those who filled out the survey that recreational trails was something that they thought looked very interesting. And then those next four items, uh, including um, 
the, the, the fifth item was the um, portion of costs for the fire department, which again is something I see in most TIF districts, but we don't have in ours. It's, it's not usually an overwhelming um, ex, you know, uh, expenditure, but it, it helps, you know, everything, everything helps. And, right. and since you do have a CMP substation and the fire department would be responsible if anything happens, that instance, um, that's definitely a justifiable type of expense. So that's something that we should definitely look into more. So, but I, and yeah, we can go through more of these or we can kind of stop here. Um, I think we can stop. I think one thing that is noticeable in this priority list is what's not there. Right. Despite the fact that it's first on the list. Right. Right. Uh, an industrial park. Yes. And that is what the TIF district has been focused on since its inception. Correct. And um, what I'm hearing based on these responses is that uh, not a super popular thing. Folks are not seeing that as a significant priority. Right. And I think based on its um, not being here, uh, I would say that one of the changes that we can recommend to the select board in terms of uh, modifications to our existing TIF district description um, is to delete the industrial park idea. Right. So why is it not on? Because it didn't even make it. It was like well, number there's, eleven. There's eleven here. There's eleven. No, no, no. It's it's um, the pink bar. Oh, forgive yeah, me. Business bar. You're right. Six point three eight. Six point three eight. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I stand corrected. It was, it, uh, having attended all economic development committee meetings for a long time, I know that it was quickly dismissed as being kind of just not something that was ever going to happen. Right. That, that it, 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 you know. Well, for a lot of reasons, we moved on from the 1980s. Right. right. And, I, and I do know that even in the, you know, a certain amount of money is supposed to go to each of these items each year and nothing's been allocated to the business park. So. Right. Right. It so just makes sense. To it hasn't know. resulted in any misallocation. It's right. just, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yes. I so overall, I mean, and again, you, uh, and so you know, if you didn't notice this at the bottom, I did invite people if they have questions about the TIF yeah. district generally, they can put their name and contact information. I probably got. 15 people oh, who asked that I contact them. Oh. Um, and so I'll be doing that and just kind of answering any questions and helping them understand the TIF district um, better. And so hopefully, again, it's all about making this less confusing and better, more transparency, you know, just better to understand how the TIF works for the town. So I'll be reaching out to those people who indicated they wanted me to reach out. Good. So some of these comments are funny. They are funny. I, I did it was it was a little bit for just kind of it's some of them are just like so just for, yes. you know a little how about none of these period. I'm glad somebody didn't say get rid of the fire department. <laughs> you're right. I know. I know which one you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah, how does the survey know I'm a citizen of Mama? Right. Oh my God. <laughs> well, that's where they're at. <laughs> it's, it's problematic. Yep. And and you know, I do I do wish, I mean, obviously the number nine comment um, <laughs> didn't go and vote, but um, just you know, I mean we can we can I thought I thought we we did try to well, uh, let's read. Let's I, just for the recording that we're making right now, in case anyone wants to watch us on our YouTube channel at some point in the future and ask, you know, why we didn't answer some of these questions. 
Um, uh, can the money be used for uh, to fix uh, the Cocknawagan Dam? Right. Um, I think we would need to kind of tie that to an economic development purpose. And then possibly again, again, yeah. that would certainly be um, a topic for discussion. With okay, the we can consider it. Yep. Um, how does this survey know I'm a citizen of Monmouth? Yes, um, we didn't. But uh, but this isn't an official uh, vote. This is sort of a non-binding survey. Um, so you're right, you got us. Um, next one. Uh, oh, this should be distributed to the entire town, not just folks who happen to see it on Facebook. Well, okay, it was also distributed on voting day. So any concerned citizens who um, voted had access to a paper version. Um, this is an interesting one. I don't want TIF money being spent to help Jellystone National Park ruin Monmouth. Um, apparently someone is talking about a lot of traffic being increased in North Monmouth uh, because of Jellystone National Park, the, 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 the beaver, former Beaver Brook campground. Well, I didn't know uh, President Biden was designated as <laughs> <Yes>, a <the> national <laughs> park. I don't know. Um, here's one. I'm a North Monmouth resident, have PFAS contamination in my well, mm -hmm. and it's important to fund public water. Um, is there a way to get South Monmouth into a TIF district? And it's interesting because South Monmouth is where the substation is. Um, and also potentially where some of these large property owners might be interested in uh, creating a many mile uh, trail system. Uh, okay. I think that's probably enough. Right. All right. Excellent. Anything else on the survey? That's all I have. All right. Um, before we move on to the facade improvement program, we should probably talk uh, a little bit about next steps uh, in terms of making changes, recommending we make changes to the TIF. Um, it seems to me that this committee could just make some broad recommendations to the select board and then leave the legal mumbo jumbo that has to happen in terms of getting a lawyer to sit down and create the proper language in the TIF, um, in the TIF document, and then sending that language to the voters potentially by November, which would be our next available election to get, to get uh, approved those changes. Um, So it seems to me like if what we if if we're satisfied with the general flavor of the recommendations that folks have made in this survey, that perhaps we could make a motion to recommend to the select board that we make changes in the TIF district for Seems to me like it's really three issues. One is the recreational trail creation. Second would be uh, certain uh, environmental protection projects specific to lakes. And third would be a public water extension to North Monmouth. And I think that would probably cover 
a portion of the cost. Oh, and and, and for the fire department, right. a portion of the cost for the fire department. Um, I think that would cover our top six items on the list. Right, come, top, come, my top five, yep. Well, top five, but even economic so, development and public access to lakes could be yeah. sort of sucked so, into the environmental yep. issues around lakes as well. Yep. So, um, Anyone want to make a motion to that effect? Because I think if we make that recommendation, I can bring it up at the next select board meeting, and then we can ask the select do board we, if they want to dedicate some time. Do, do we feel like that this is a good sample of the community? 100 people out of population 4,100. Um, it seems to me like these are the ones that care. Yeah. These are the ones that want to participate. I'm fine with the talk. Six. I, I'm just making sure we move forward on these recommendations based on the survey. Yeah, that we're comfortable as a committee. Well, going forward, I'm okay with it. Um, I'm okay with it. I knowing that this is just the beginning of the process. Yeah. Right. That there's a public hearing at a select board meeting to actually approve changes before it goes onto a ballot. Knowing that then it goes onto a ballot, so that voters get a chance to weigh in on it if they strongly disagree, knowing that uh, that ballot is likely to be in November, which is generally going to be a sort of a medium high turnout type of election where we'll get a pretty good measure of the temperature of, you know, the attitude of, of voters. And if, if we're off base on this, they can just vote no. I think that this will definitely bring up more openness for discussion. I mean, I remember just, was it two years ago, the solar farm, you know, we just got a letter in the mail. We had yeah. no idea what it was. Then we got a hearing. And then at the end, there was, what, 100 people at Cumston Hall in the middle of a pandemic. So right. Right. if you just at least put the words out there, I think you build it, they will come. Sure. <laughs> so I look at this as sort of a seed crystal. Yeah. Like, like this is the beginning, not the end. And that, that really is up to the select board to sort of you know, organize the conversation, give plenty of opportunity for the general public, not the 101 public people who weighed in to come and express their opinions and be heard. Well, the, what we want to do is vote to have, if we bring forward a recommendation to the board of selectmen, the top six for the survey, yep. and for them to consider making changes to the TIF district language or whatever and put that on November? Uh, my hope would be that we would get it straightened away so that by November, people would be voting on it. Okay. Is that a motion? Yeah. Do I hear a second? Yes. We have a second. And look, we have a quorum. All those in favor? <laughs> and, and I will say, as someone who goes to these public meetings and has to kind of sell it to people who may not be completely plugged in, this is a great um, foundation uh, to start with. You know, we talked to you back in June. You know, we got public input. Um, so this is coming. These recommendations are coming from you. The voters, you know, primarily. Um, I think they make, I think just from our perspective, the committee's perspective, there's nothing on here that doesn't make sense. You know, these all seem sensible um, expenditures working the town towards economic, you know. I think we need to have more explanation of each subject matter though. Yes, uh, well, and, and that's- Maybe Provide examples, you know. Yes, and that will be that will, again will be when um, talking to Shana about just kind of what's been done other places. What are some creative right. things? What's reasonable? This this will be a little labor intensive again because by bringing in the public water extension, like I said, we're going to have to swap land um, and make sure that we're in the area where public water would want to be extended to. You know, we need to, 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 to 
extend the TIF district to that point. So it's going to be a little more. We can't create a second TIF district. Well, you I'm remember sure that percentage. Right? Well, the the or whatever. this TIF district is funded by the CMP station. That's where the revenues come from. So if you create a, a separate TIF district, it doesn't have the revenues from the substation. So that's what we have to kind of keep this tied to. You know, it's not impossible. It's just, it's going to take a little. Now what happens thinking. with this new analysis when that's done? If he finds that, yeah, it's only 13 million or instead of 20 million, does that get recalculated now? And instead of getting the, however, however much we get per, per year, does that get reduced? So instead of 100. Eight thousand a year, it drops to seventy-five thousand a year. It could, it could happen. Yeah. Um, it's not happened in the last thirteen times he's done it for any municipality. In mm -hmm. fact, some of the municipalities have seen a doubling or tripling of the value. Okay. So yeah, good to know. Yeah. So, uh, and and zero municipalities have lost tax revenue on the deal, right? So we're spending five thousand dollars to hire a consultant. I think there's very low risk that we're going to lose five thousand dollars. Somebody talked to about involved in some of these other knows knows the guy who does this analysis. Bill Bill Tynan is his name. Yeah. So I mean, it could happen. Yeah. I suppose it could. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm like, very yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, you're going to reach out to Bill Tynan. Yes. I'll or ask to Justin, Justin to, yeah. Yeah. okay. I'll work with Justin. To okay. Um, uh, you'll let Justin know that we've made, we voted a recommendation to the select board so that he can put it on our next agenda. <laughs> Right. When is your next meeting? Is it? I don't know. Let's talk to the chair. When's our next meeting? Next, next week. Yeah, it's twenty ninth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if I get this to him tomorrow, he'll be able to get it to you guys. Yeah. And the chair is going to meet with him and talk about the agenda anyway, right? You're going to make I, sure that we, we have talked to him on Thursday. Okay. That, that's what you scared. All right. Don't forget. Oh no. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, it's good. That's actually encouraging news. This is a exciting. this is exciting to see what we sort of guessed might be true actually be more likely to be true. It's not it's not absolutely true, right? I mean, it's just a survey, but a lot of people are in agreement. Yeah. Um, do we need to modify that motion at all to say and no industrial park? <laughs> um, that might be, would that be up to the select board to kind of review the survey survey and kind of make it make it, I think, you know, I think everyone is pretty clear that that's not the future of Monmouth. So, um, I think we put it quickly, just put it, just put it in the minutes of this meeting. Yeah. We discussed it. It was clearly very low on the list. Therefore, it's not part of our recommendation going forward. Okay. Very well. Very diplomatic. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Facade improvement program. We're yes. ready for the next item. Yes. Application form. <sighs> So I'm just passing out the current application form thank you, thank for you. this facade um, improvement program. Uh, and I'll say um, there's a couple of versions of this floating around. There's one from 2012 or 13, and then apparently the select board updated this this uh, application in 2017. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll be very honest that I, I think it's still a little bit raw, um, which is why I didn't get all of the, um, I, I wanted to get a little feedback from, from you guys before I made my final drafted recommendations to the group. 
Uh, and so just again, to, to kind of introduce this, uh, the town has funded for it through the TIF revenues, um, just a um, facade improvement program. And um, so there's funds available where entities can apply and receive up to 50% for improvements on their properties um, in kind of on the main street area primarily, um, but they can use for signage, painting, um, you know, kind of um, siding improvements, streetscape type improvements, just to kind of uh, improve the feel and presentation of their business. How about roofs? Roofs are not an allowable expense. Where do you see that? On page six. Page six or seven. Yeah, on, on mine it's seven, but. It says in a couple of places that roofs are not eligible projects. Um, so again, I, I'm not sure exactly why that might be, for example, that's something that we can discuss and see if that's something that would want, we'd want to include. I don't know that it's included in a whole lot of facade improvement projects, but it certainly helps to maintain the integrity of a building and it's certainly a huge expense. What happened um, with the museum building that's shared with that gentleman right across the street from the post office? Uh, didn't the roof get done there? And yeah, uh, I am the trustee of the museum, but I don't remember where they got the money. The chimney work and the. Uh, I mean, it was an amazing job, you know, and it, it, it was in such disrepair. And then when that got done, I was like, wow, you know, really improved yeah. that, that area of town. And the same with the house next door, which was used for TIF funds, right? That all that improved. And he had a roof down. Uh, it's, I know it's always been a, a, an issue because, uh, well, the, the bakery, when they, they had a, a facade grant. They but painted they though. What I thought I thought the Apple Valley Bakery paint had a paint job. Yeah, but they they also wanted a roof. Oh. They needed a roof, and they couldn't. And they were turned down. But what was not allowed? Uh, so I. Yeah, we just need to make sure we're being fair across the board. You know? Yeah. So a past yeah. practice that that occurred. That's I know it's always been in the TIF from. Early days. Mm -hmm. You mean the facade improvement program? Yeah. 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 Um, so, yes, roofs are not currently considered facade improvement. Um, Could they be? I don't know what the reasoning is for not having it. So, I'd have to do a little research. I mean, I, 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 mean, I would assume that if it's your. You know, Masonic Hall goes the need to do a roof real bad and it can be pretty costly. So I would, as a mason, I would apply if that was eligible. Well, the, and the, the other thing is there, there is a up to $12,500 per applicant, you know, to match. So it's a $25,000 up to $25,000 project. So <laughs> if roofs were to be considered, it could be up to $12,500. Yeah, yeah, fifty percent off the roof. So, you, you know our TIF attorney. Yes. You know. Yeah, and, but you know, I think I think um, you know I'm doing some community development block grant facade grants in Belfast right now, and um, I think it's just kind of a standard practice. I don't know that it's not allowed, but when you're talking about facades roofs are just not considered a facade. You know, I mean, I know they're not in that program. Um, that's not to say that you can't make your own rules. Right. Well, I, I wouldn't want to be in violation of any sort of state requirement right. so or statute. Question. So that would be a question for the attorney would yeah. be like, oh, if, I mean, and, and this could be, I mean, clearly, uh, on our last topic, right, facade improvement was uh, number three. three. And so if 
this is a strong part of the existing TIP program and maybe one of the suggestions that we could consider make, recommending to the select board is that um, roofs, uh, the possibility of roofs be, be considered to be added into this facade improvement program um, uh, if, it's, if it's legal. Right. And that's something that we can be that can be explored definitely. Um, and and I will I and I guess I will kind of direct the conversation um, since we are in this uh, topic on page four. Uh, this is something that I have not often seen, um, which is that residential properties are allowed to be considered for facade improvement program uh, it, on specific in specific areas, which on the one hand certainly makes sense because it's it's part of your streetscape of your business downtown district. Um, however, uh, again, we have to balance that with public perception in terms of people maybe not thinking that residential personal property should benefit from this type of uh, program. I know why that's there. Um, in, in 2012, when this was sort of coming to fruition, uh, the downtown area had numerous vacant and dilapidated buildings. And, uh, and it was generally the, you know, uh, the worst part of town in terms of building maintenance. And, and a lot of it was personal property uh, in addition to the, some of the businesses that were down there. So uh, the feeling was that, um, and maybe it's changed. I mean, maybe the select board wouldn't think that that is an important feature today, um, but I know that in 2012, yeah, it was pretty ugly down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's and it's it's one of the reasons why when the map was created for where, you know, uh, what are all the parcels of land that are in this, um, they were trying to incentivize people to uh, maintain their properties, fix them up, bring them, bring them, make, improve their properties, make make improvements that potentially we could. Um, we could give a, a credit enhancement agreement to. Um, so, uh, I mean, we can we can pose that question to the select board about what direction they want to go in. Um, I hear what you're saying about personal property being, you know, looking a little iffy in terms of transparency and. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Doug? Well, but actually, the only it was just the uh, your postmaster uh, who had Bill. The, uh, the man, but uh, well, he is the old postmaster, but, but the one before that. Oh, oh I don't know who that. Is. Well, you're dating yourself now. <laughs> Harry, something. Anyway. Uh, who own the credit union building did it themselves. So it was only Terry's. Terry that's the one that's adjoining the museum. Yeah. Right. That's that got because it was uh, what they, you know, distressed. Distressed properties. Yeah. yeah. Of course, Curly's could use something. Looking pretty distressed. And, and then Mary Flanders' old fire station. Which I would is, love to have, but she won't give it. <laughs> it's pretty distressed. I would love to turn that into a fire department it's, museum. It must, unless somebody does something about that, it's going to fall into the course of this. Yeah. And the, the whole the whole shoreline or the, needs to be reinforced. Needs to be reinforced. Yeah. And, and she found the cost for that was too much for what she wanted to put into it. She always just the whole floor. The floor needs to be all redone. Yeah. But I mean, you could you could clearly say that that's not residential property; that that's a business property, and 
if she wanted to apply, if she wanted to make those repairs uh, and apply for a facade improvement because it's commercial property, then uh, then we wouldn't have the sort of, you know, I, we wouldn't have the sort of uh, potential conflict where someone's saying, why does someone get a special incentive on their to fix their personal property um, when that's not really economic development? That's just bad maintenance. <laughs> We're bailing yeah, somebody out. I was just saying, I mean, I just, it, it's not something that I've I've seen in other facade improvement rooms. That right. said, um, you know, because of the the way that Mammoth is laid out, you do have residential properties right in the middle of Next your. Thing. Yeah. you know, business area. And so if they look run down, then, you know, it's yeah, some it of them, kind of- Some of them still do. <laughs> it kind of uh, weighs down the, the district type of thing. So yeah. it's, 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 not a, it's not a judgment. It's just, again, something to consider in terms of whether um, that's in the best interest of the facade program, which it very, mel very well may be. Just something to think about. Is there anything on Main Street for sale? that I know of. Except, no, no, the rent for rent is the uh, the old bank, yeah. not for sale. Really? really? Bangor Savings just doesn't want to sell it? They just want to lease it? Hmm. I would love that piece of property right next to the quick um, Mom, it's general store. Good. The one around the corner, mm -hmm. close to the bank. Now, I'll introduce you to Mary Turner. Yeah, Mary Turner. Because it's not actively for sale. But and I've, tried, I've tried to contact her and gotten no really yeah just kind of asking her what her plans is are can I help can I and I just haven't gotten anything from her. Bowling alley. How fun would that be? <laughs> Emily DeFore. Yeah, what about? She's not interested in. I mean, she's a business. She's yeah. Just, I'll just show the money. To do what? To do anything. Well. Uh, uh, there's there she's been there a long while and there's been some there's been some drama that's not appropriate for the public record i'll put it that way <laughs> and it and it's uh and it's not it's it's not one-sided drama either no <laughs> well, it's a piece of property she's got yeah. inside. Well, you know, and, and again, part of the, the goal of this is to update this and then to actively market it to Emily and to other entities that are eligible for it, because I think a lot of this is that people have no idea that it exists, how it works, that it's really not that overwhelming in terms of an application process um, and a way to uh, improve your property and, and get businesses and entities to invest in in yeah. places that mom is I would love to invest in something I got a, I got a second floor of my, my office building yeah <laughs> the attic would make a great bowl and alley <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking an indoor archery range or something uh, I can do it or like a golf out. simulator <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, and again, we're we're ramping up against the time, and I That's I fine. do recognize that there is one member of, on this at this table who has been incredibly patient, but uh, <laughs> just like <laughs> this one? beyond patient. <laughs> um, yeah. But I um, I do I do think um, this is a matter. I, I don't think that that fundamentally there's any problem with this application you know or or the program but um the question is like i said how is it marketed and do people understand that it's really not that difficult to, to take right. advantage of yeah. so, so can i can i um ask if folks would want to consider making a motion to pose some questions to the select board about this application. Um, it seems to me like there are two issues that you've brought up, Reagan, that I mean, we don't necessarily have to weigh in on as a committee, but we can ask the select board if uh, their opinion on whether they think they're 
worthy of revising. Um, one is uh, the issue of including roofs in the facade improvement program. Um, so just adding it to page six on the list of acceptable things. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily a suggestion, but it's just a, hey, here's an idea. I, I just think of roofs in the last 25, 30 years. You paint, right. you, know, you paint four years, five years, you gotta, paint. You gotta do it again. Right, right, right. It's worth questioning. Yeah. Right. You have nothing to lose. And especially right. a sloped roof that faces Main Street and you drive by and you look at it. It's got shingles popping and right. bubbling. Right. And then the, the second question, and I think it's a valid one, and maybe it's one that um, we just need to have a conversation about, and maybe there is no, maybe the select board ha doesn't have it, an opinion on it, uh, strong enough to change it, but do we want to continue um, offering the facade improvement grant program to private residential properties within the business right, within area. that particular district area. Is that a motion? Sure. I got a motion. I got a second. All right, all in favor. It's done. Great. Excellent. Uh, ask a question about this application uh, in regards to the beach party because I, I didn't make the board lead in but did the board uh, approve the TIF application yeah and was it approved to reduce the amount to 1500 no no because no. I only got a check for 1500 from the town I think it's half up front half up front I believe so I never heard of that I think I believe I think that's on the application actually. It's half up front and then half after the mm -hmm. event. Really? Oh, yeah. That's not that's not wow. happened in the past. Oh. So in the past when we requested funds, we got the full amount. Not that we need it, you know, we were very appreciative of the fifteen hundred, but i I knew that we applied for three thousand. I I got the check the other day for fifteen and it just kinda of threw me off. Yeah. I was I was gonna bring it up at the next meeting, but I wasn't aware that it was only half, but I don't, I, you know, There's so much turnover there with the new town manager and our, we lost our bookkeeper. Oh, yeah. It's so that's a game. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what the. But you, it's your, I understand. I think it's, it's on the application. On the application, it's 50% off. Yes. 50% 50 50 up front and then 50% after the time. Prior to town manager, probably to pay attention to that. They just, they just wrote the check. They just right. the check for the amount. Yeah. Okay, that answers the question. Yes, Thank no. you. Yeah. Um, I think we're good for it, though. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, I'll just say quickly. I tried to get an update from Dennis prior to this meeting because also at the uh, voting polls, I had made little flyers for business owners to go home and fill out the online application or the online um, form that we have uh, to, to uh, list your business, but he didn't get back to me. I'm hoping that that got the word out a little more and I've asked Justin to do a Facebook post because clearly people look at the Facebook page yes, um, and uh, and just encourage business owners to, to um, register their businesses. Do we know where we're at in terms of the display portion of that? I know we had a page to actually collect the information. I had sent Dennis uh, a, a, some some um, categories. Yeah. Um, and But, you know, I mean, if he he may be waiting for a few more businesses to put it all together. Um, but again, I didn't hear from him, so I'll be able to okay. check in and get that up. If you could. Yep. Uh, and if, yeah. If you could, that'd be great. Okay. Um, update on signage on private property. Oh yeah, this was about profanity. My, my rant on profanity. So I, I get a chance to go. I so I, I, okay. I drove by one of the properties that I thought you were implying. Yeah. And I didn't see any. Profanity. Oh, brand new flag today. <laughs> Are you talking about the one next to the quick shop? Or? No, over on Maple Street. Oh, I, I didn't know about that one. There's one on Maple Street. I thought you were talking about Academy Road a little further up. 
Oh, I missed that one. No, no, there, there isn't one. Okay, but so that one's gone. Pleasant Street. Uh, it's Pleasant Street, not Maple okay. Street. Yeah, Pleasant Street. It's a new one. Uh, brand new, brand spanking new. New people. Yeah, I don't know who that is. All right. Well, if you don't know, then and there's no well, and, relationship. Right? And I and I thought the other one, the was, quick shop one. Yeah. Um, Next is is a little. I haven't seen. I've been like hoping to like drive by. I drive, I drive by every day, and I was hoping to see them out on the porch. I never see them out there. That's why I haven't stopped by. All right. Well, it's good. That's fine. Uh, you need to find the right time to do it. I totally get it because yeah. it's a delicate conversation. It is. Um, and I uh, I appreciate the little, the little your voice, Riley. Yeah. He did a big thing, you know, to raise money to get that ramp put in and then get him a fire truck. Happy birthday thing. I don't know. So there's, there's a, a relationship there. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Well, but I don't know if, if he's still there or not. There's no uh it's a it's been an annoyance for what six months, a year, a long time. But I still so, see them out there. At That's least this weird. one he put it on the side. He went up on Academy Road. Oh, is it on the side? That's why he we're not seeing the, it. The F word to the side. Oh. And it, in front is now something else. It's a Trump side. It's yeah. Trump's side in the front, and he put the F yeah, Biden on the on the side. That's, that, that was all I was thinking of, and oh. I didn't see it. And there's another one somewhere else in town. It's FCK Biden. Yeah, the one on They're on Pleasant up. Street is F <laughs> a flag. Late to the party. <laughs> <laughs> and it's brand spanking new. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they feel it's their freedom of speech. Yeah, of course it is. And it totally maybe is. not on the road to the kids going to school. Well, this is exactly my point. It's like this is not something we want to be teaching our Very kids is normal in Monmouth. Not cool. Is there a way to the town say something publicly? Kind of like embarrassing. Well, not to you know, not to draw them out or you know, say names if, or addresses, if, but just if we the town doesn't approve of this somehow. Yeah. I mean, we've had that conversation at a couple of select board meetings, and they're not listening. They're not listening, or or it's it's haha. See, I got their attention. Mm -hmm. Right, no, it's definitely an attention. And the, rather than having a one on one conversation, if if there's some sort of neighbor to neighbor like one on one conversation, like look, I'm a parent and my kid rides a school bus and he drives by this thing every day. And I really would appreciate parent to parent that you not teach my kid that this is okay. That's the conversation. I can't make you do this. I'm asking a favor. I don't want to embarrass you. I don't want to embarrass Some people you. Thrive on that. Though, of course, so they I do. don't even know if you want to poke the. Well, bear. this is why if there's a if there's a relationship, or an existing you. relationship, then um, then someone can you know be a, still a gentle suggester. I'll make cupcakes. I'll make Trump cupcakes. <laughs> Just take the sign down. <laughs> I'll get you a new sign. I, I will pay for a new sign that does not include profanity. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. No profanity. <laughs> oh, All right. So our next meeting. Our next meeting is September 20th at 6 p.m. We're taking the summer off. Thank God. Although I feel like I'll be working on a tip amendment. So oh, yeah. you don't <laughs> get the summer off. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> All, right. All right. You don't get the summer off. But you will need we get the summer guidance off. The, uh, along the way. You don't think? I, I will ask the attorney, but that's what I do for work. It's a different amendments. It's an application. I mean, you can always just shoot us an email. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. need to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll be, I'll be around. So. so okay. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yeah. All right. I got one seconded. All those in favor? Right. Yes. Back to business. There was a. What time is it? 7 12. We're adjourned at 7 12.